being able to create your own 360 worlds is such a cool thing to do. And we live in a day and age where it's really not that hard to do. And so that's the purpose of this video is for me to show you a couple of different ways, actually three different ways that you can do it. So we're going to be looking at three apps in particular, Blender, Final Cut Pro X, and Unity. And in each of these apps, you can create 360 content from scratch. So I'm not talking about using a 360 video camera and recording footage and then editing that footage. I'm talking about digitally designing and building your own worlds to which you can then quote unquote enter with either a virtual reality headset or a social media app like YouTube or Facebook. Speaking of which, if you want to upload a 360 video to an app like YouTube or Facebook, you're going to have to have an additional app besides the ones I'm talking about that's called Spatial Media Metadata Injector. And that will allow you to share it online and let viewers change the perspective while looking at the footage. And before we get into it, I just wanted to point out that if you're going to make 360 content, my main tip is don't make your user sick. There's a couple of ways you can avoid this, and one is by keeping your camera stationary or moving it at a consistent rate and not changing directions or stopping and starting. You wanna keep your camera in one place or have it moving at a set pace in order to avoid the, the nausea that people might experience. But with that said, let's get into our first app. First program we're going to talk about is Blender. I love this program. There's so many things you can do with it from 3D printing to animation to, of course, making 360 content, which is why we're here today. So this is the standard layout. You can change it to however you want um, by dragging the borders of these panels. Um, you can change what's inside each panel. Um, let me show you how I set my Blender up for making 360 content. I like a layout like this. I usually have one panel where I can look at everything in the 3D scene. You can see I got the camera in the center here and I got what's going on um, all around it. And then I usually like to have a front view somewhere and a top view and that just makes things easier. Um, you know, when you're designing in a 3D world. And then, of course, I always like to have the video output panel somewhere that I can see what the actual output is going to look like. So I'm going to set this to rendered view. And you can see we got the 360 view here stretched out to a flat image. I believe it's called an equa rectangular image. And then at the bottom I got the, the timeline for, um, you know, the different keyframes. I also like to have the dope sheet. The dope sheet allows you to see all the different keyframes within the scene, and that helps when making animations. So as for the actual 360 settings, I use the Cycles engine. So you can see right here you have the option of different engines. It is possible to use the newest EV engine, but you have to download a plugin to get that to work, and I didn't have success with that. So I stick with Cycles and um, Cycles makes it really easy to set up making 360 content. Uh, the only issue is it takes a long time to render the frames of the final video. So that's one of the disadvantages. And I want to point out that I'm using Blender 3.0 for this video. And what I do is put in a camera. Like I said, it's right here in the center. And for the camera settings, I set the type to panoramic and the panorama type to aqua rectangular. And I believe I just left all these settings to their defaults. But of course you can tweak these as you see fit. For the actual output settings, the important thing to do is make sure your output properties are set for that uh, 360 uh, resolution. So for the X axis, I put that at 4096 and the Y axis at 2048. For the frame rate, I always do 60 FPS. It just comes out smoother. You can set your 3D options as well here. Um, in combination with the actual camera, if I go back to the camera here, you can see I got the stereoscopy section here. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but um, you can set how, how, how far the distance should be between each eye and those sorts of settings. And so you can have uh, ultimately an image rendered that has a top 
and bottom frame, one for each eye, and then you can turn that into a 3D video. So Blender is a pretty solid option for making 360 content. You can see when I render out this image, it starts doing its magic. And because I'm using the Cycles engine, like I said, it does take a while. I mean, this frame alone took almost 30 seconds to, to output. So I'd obviously have to tweak the settings to lower that. If I go up here, then I can see each eye slightly off kilter to give you that 3D effect. So that's Blender in a nutshell for making 360 content. Next up, we're going to look at Final Cut Pro X. Obviously, you can only use this on a Mac, but it has some cool 360 features. Although I will say I have found that this, this program will crash a lot when making 360 content. That could be because of my Mac, because it's older. With that said, let's get into how you can make a 360 video using Final Cut Pro X. So with Blender, the 360 settings are, are done after the fact. But with Final Cut Pro X, you have to do it before you even get to work on your project. You want to make sure your 360 settings are in place. So what I'm going to do is make a new project. I'll call it 360. And I'll set the video to 360. And I'll set it to stereoscopic view so I get that 3D effect. And crank up the resolution to 4096 to 4096 and up the frame rate to 60p. And those are some good settings to use. And once my project is created, I can start adding in content. So I'll go over to the titles section, and you can see they got some 360 options for you to use. Really, it's not much, um, but it's something. I'm going to pull in the 360 gradient. So I have a nice gradient, and you can see I got the stereo view for each eye. And one thing I'm going to do is go to my view settings, and I want to see the 360 view. So I'll go to Show in Viewer and select 360. And then what that allows me to do is to actually drag this panel, and I can look around. It's just a gradient right now, so there's not much to look at, but it comes in very handy with 360 content. So what I'm going to do is add in a 360 title, and just drag that in and drop it right on top. Um, if I drag my screen around, I should be able to see it. i got to find it here. Um, I'm actually going to reset the angle to the default view. And then you can see this is what it will look like um, with a headset on or with some kind of 360 viewer. could be your phone. So they give you some other options that you can use for titles. It's nice to have the option. Overall, Final Cut Pro X, obviously you're not going to be able to do a lot of 3D work, if at all. Um, using this program. So if you're creating content from scratch, Final Cut Pro X is probably not your option. But if you have a 360 camera, then Final Cut Pro X can be a great way to tweak the footage and edit it to your needs. Alright, lastly we're going to look at the Unity game engine for making 360 content. And in this video I'm using version 2020.3.25 f1 and yeah believe it or not uh, game engine can be a good way to create 360 video content so in unity you have to use something called the unity recorder and you activate this in the package manager under the unity registry you go down to unity recorder and make sure it's installed and once you do that, you have all kinds of different ways of setting up your 360 video. These are usually the settings I use. Um, you got to set it to 360 view. I set the frame rate to 60. And for the dimensions, I usually use 4096 by 2048 and the cube map 4096. And you can record in stereo, which is nice. Include the audio, have one file that you output. They give you some different file format options as well. Um, by the way, um, you have to link a camera to it. So what I do is I select tagged camera, and the tag is VR viewer, and I just make sure that I have my main camera tagged as VR viewer. 
And so then when I hit record, it'll pull whatever's in this main camera. So I have this attached to this character so that when I hit play, the camera goes along with it. And if you notice, I have the camera within an object, and that's so I can move around the, the view while I'm playing the scene so that I can see what's going on from that 360 perspective. Um, but if I need to actually move the camera around when I'm, when I'm working on the project, I move around its, its parent. Um, so that works pretty well. And it gives you some different recording options. You can do it manually, meaning you can hit start and stop as you please, or you can set it to a, a specific time. Um, I can have it go for, let's say, let's have it go for three seconds. Um, that would be, what's 60 times 3? 180 frames. So let me go ahead and I'll hit start recording. And you'll notice, now that I'm recording, it's going to slow everything down because it's capturing every frame. Um, but it's cool because the final output is nice and fluid. So I'm like, Unity, take all the time you need. This is way quicker than Blender cycles. So just keep that in mind. And once it's done, you can look at your output. You can see I got it right here. And it's a really short clip, but you can see... Um, that it's got that equirectangular view and this is actually for an upcoming video that I'm working on about first person shooters so stay tuned thanks for watching this video today I hope this helps some of you out there and if you like this video you might like some of the other videos on this channel so feel free to subscribe but either way I hope that you have a wonderful day and hope to see you next time